welcome back to the PWLC kitchen. Um, today we're going to go ahead and do a spaghetti squash chow mein. Uh, we're just going to show you how to make the chow mein portion of it. Um, it's basically just a lower carb option for chow mein. Um, you're going to get plenty of veggies, lots of good flavor in it. Um, but then you can always add your protein. Um, you can add it to the side, you can mix it in, you could do chicken, you could do the salmon recipe that we've done, um, you could do our halibut recipe. I mean, you could really do just pretty much any kind of meat that you wanted to add with this, um, and it would be super delicious. So the first thing uh, with the spaghetti squash is you have to cut it, and this is no easy feat, okay? They have a really, really thick skin, um, or rind, I guess maybe you would call it, and so you're gonna need a pretty sharp knife um, so that I don't cut myself in front of you. I've already actually chopped this one in half, okay? Um, so this is the size of the spaghetti squash that you want. It's a fairly small one. I mean, you can find them that are up to like this big, but uh, for this recipe, we just need uh, the smaller one. So uh, three to four pounds, I think two to three would even work. And so the first thing we wanna do is go ahead and clean out our spaghetti squash. Um, so this is, you know, pretty similar to how you would clean out like a pumpkin. So you just wanna kinda get all of the seeds out. You just kinda scrape and dig. So scrape and dig, all right? This is a bit of a, a sensory exercise for us. And you know, some people do save the seeds. You can roast them after you've cleaned them. Okay, just keep scraping. They'll eventually all come out. You kind of have to break into the, um, into the little, you know, like shreds into the fibers. You can also use your hands and pull if you've got a big chunk. Almost got this one clean. And you're gonna do the exact same thing to the other half, okay? And that way it's nice and clean before we get it uh, roasting. And while I've already done this, but if you wanna go ahead and if you've got the Ninja Grill, go ahead and preheat to 350. Um, if you're using just your oven, same thing, just you know, bake on 350, so go ahead and get that preheating. Okay, almost cleaned here. I'm just gonna use my fingers, I think, for the rest. Get a little more here. Okay, so that's a pretty clean spaghetti squash. All right, and this is what it should really look like kind of once you've cleaned it out. Um, if you're super picky about it, you can get all of these little uh, fibers out of there, but you really don't have to, just as long as the majority of it is gone. So again, you wanna go ahead and do the same thing to the other side. I'm just gonna do this one for the purposes of the video, but do the same thing to the other side, and then we'll get started actually cooking the spaghetti squash. Okay, so the thing that you need to do to the spaghetti squash before you get going on actually cooking it, um, just basically sprinkling some oil. I also usually do a little bit of salt and pepper on it as well. Um, so just kind of drizzle the oil over the top. It's gonna help keep it from getting burnt. It's also gonna give it that nice roasted look and flavor. I just kind of spread it around on the inside, make sure everything's covered. You can sometimes just kind of touch the outsides a little bit too, that way that doesn't get too crispy. Okay, and then the salt and pepper, we'll add that. Okay, so today we are using the pink Himalayan salt from the store salt in Amarillo. Just sprinkle a light dusting. And then just black pepper, this one is a fine. You can use coarse if you want, doesn't matter. Okay, so we've got our oil, we've got our salt and our pepper, and now this is ready to go either into the oven or into uh, your Ninja Grill. If you're gonna do it in the oven, put it on a baking sheet. You can put down something nonstick, parchment paper, or one of those Silpat mats. Um, we're just gonna put it directly into the Ninja Grill. We've got it preheated uh, to 350. And you put it in upside down, okay? So it's gonna kinda catch some of the steam. There we go. And just close it and kind of let it do its thing. It's going to take about 30 to 45 minutes. Again, that kind of depends on how big your spaghetti squash is. So I would say check it at 30 minutes. If it's pretty tender, you're good to go. If it's still a little bit raw, go ahead and cook it for about another 15 minutes. 
Okay, so we um, have a cooked spaghetti squash here ready to go. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna basically gut it. <laughs> so take out the insides. You just take your fork and you just kind of shred it, okay? It should kind of start coming apart. And you'll see as you do that, it's basically going to make little spaghettis, okay? Um, so that's gonna be what we're using in place of the chow mein noodles. Go ahead and pull some of this out. And you just keep shredding until there's pretty much no more to shred. <laughs> this is also a fun thing. You know, some people will do spaghetti squash noodles in uh, soups. They'll do it with actual, you know, spaghetti sauce, with a meat sauce, marinara. Um, so, you know, it's one of those low-carb alternatives. You're getting in plenty of fiber. You're getting in a few servings of veggies probably. And you're not, you know, dabbling into the ultra-processed foods that you've got from your pastas and all of that. So I know, you know, some people will talk about, you know, like maybe a chickpea pasta or a gluten-free non-grain pasta. I don't know about you guys, but if you've ever tried those, they're always pretty terrible. <laughs> um, either that or you have to really know how to cook it. And you can't cook it too long. You also can't cook it too short. So uh, this is a really great alternative. It does take some time. You know, you've got the 30 to 45 minutes in the oven or in the air fryer. But, um, you know, if you can just kind of get that going, you can move on to something else. And then it's pretty easy to prepare after that. Okay, so I've shredded this one. So you can see I basically just have the edges left. There's a little bit more. I'm not going to be super picky on that, but you could keep shredding if you wanted to. Okay, so we're going to take that and now we're going to go ahead and start making uh, the chow mein, the spaghetti squash chow mein. I'm just going to pick all of this up and put it in. And then remember, you have a whole other half as well that you want to add in. Okay, so I went ahead and shredded the other half of the spaghetti squash, kind of put that in here, and we're gonna get our sauces prepared. So this is actually a recipe that comes from the cookbook that we sell here in our store. You can get it other places as well, uh, but it's called the Complete Bariatric Cookbook and Meal Plan. So if you're looking for the exact recipe, wanna get this book. Um, if you are not my patient and I haven't talked to you about this, um, this is a book that is great for surgery. It's also great for people who aren't doing surgery. It's got really good, healthy recipes in it, good quality ingredients. They're usually very simple recipes, so they're not gonna call for a bunch of ingredients that you've never heard of, uh, like exotic ingredients or anything like that. So pretty simple stuff. Um, some of them are just kind of a take on home cooking. Um, and so great option for surgery. Plus it's going to have a 10 week, I believe, nine or 10 week meal plan in there. Um, so that's something that if you're the person that needs an exact thing to follow, you know, what should I eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? It has it in here for you, plus the recipe. So you can't get much better than that. It's like $20. Um, so again, the complete bariatric cookbook and meal plan is where we're getting this recipe. And so we're gonna start with our sauce. We've got some soy sauce here. It's about a fourth of a cup. We've used the low sodium. Um, it's ultimately up to you what you use. You can use regular. You can also use the liquid coconut aminos if you wanted to avoid soy. Um, and then we're gonna add uh, three of our garlic cloves. We've just kind of minced those up. And then we've also got some um, minced ginger. So it's about one inch. So when you buy ginger in the store, it's gonna look like a root, kind of looks like fingers. Um, and you're looking for one that's about an inch long. It'll probably come bigger than that, but I usually look for the little nubs that you can just use. That way you don't have a ton of extra. But if it comes in a longer one, you know, no big deal. Just cut yourself off about an inch, peel it first, and then go ahead and mince it up. And we'll add that here. And, and just so you know, that's always how you'll see ginger in recipes. It'll never be like a tablespoon unless it's like powdered ginger. Um, if it's like fresh ginger, it's always gonna be like one inch or two inch, half an inch, something like that. So keep your eye out for that. Um, but go ahead and mix those into the soy sauce. All right, and then we're gonna start our sauteing process. Um, so for now, I'm gonna go ahead and take the grill portion out of the Ninja. So it's just this little guy here. 
And so we're just doing this because we're here in a, uh, like a break room kitchen, so we don't really have something we can saute in. Um, but if you're at home, you know, get yourself a big skillet and you could very well saute in that. I have an Instapot at home, you can saute in the Instapot. So I mean, really, it's totally up to you what you use. But generally for sauteing, you're gonna use like a medium high heat. Um, so we're gonna put in the celery, we're gonna put in the onions, and then we're gonna put in a couple of tablespoons of the avocado oil. So I'm gonna start with that. So two tablespoons approximately. Celery, so with the celery, let's see, we've got three stalks that we've just kind of cut up and, and sliced thin. And then for our onion, let's see, we did about a small white onion. Um, gonna dice that up as well. Just put all of that in there. This is like one of the best smells in the world. You've got celery and onions, and then we're eventually gonna add garlic, and we've got the oil in there. It's super delicious smelling. So just kind of toss that around in the bottom of the grill or in the bottom of your pan. And I'm gonna up my heat just a little bit. Okay, so we've got the heat up on the Ninja Grill, just kind of getting it to more of that saute temperature. Um, so the onions and the celery are looking, you know, pretty uh, tender. And so we're gonna go ahead and add in um, our cabbage. So the recipe calls for you to actually just cut up your cabbage. Um, you need about two cups. You could definitely do that. We just went ahead and bought the coleslaw mix to make it a little bit easier. So we're just gonna dump two cups of the coleslaw mix in and go ahead and start sauteing that as well. Let that get a little bit uh, soft as well as the onions and celery. I'm gonna close the lid for just a minute to let it get that temperature back up. Uh, typically it's gonna take you about, like if you're sauteing consistently, it's gonna take you about one to two minutes um, to get that cabbage soft, but really you'll just be able to tell by looking. Um, so it's not gonna take you very long, so keep a close eye. I think that's good enough. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the cabbage or the coleslaw is getting nice and soft, so we're gonna go ahead and add in the spaghetti squash as well, basically just to warm it up. Got quite a bit in here. It does fit in the Ninja Grill, okay, in case you were wondering. And then just go ahead and go ahead and kind of stir that around, mix it up nicely with the onions, the celery, the cabbage mix, and gonna close the lid for another one or two minutes while it heats up and sautés. Okay, so I've got the spaghetti squash, you know, just a little bit warmed up in there, and so now I'm gonna go ahead and add the sauce. You will notice in the recipe in the book, it calls for oyster sauce. We couldn't find any in Amarillo, so at the store we went to, so it doesn't have oyster sauce. If you have some at home or have a little fish sauce, you know, put a little uh, drop in there, you know, a quarter teaspoon, something like that. But we're just gonna do it with, uh, you know, the ginger, the garlic, and the soy sauce. And this is gonna give it that, you know, that flavor that you get with chow mein. It's also gonna make those noodles kind of brown like you get with chow mein. So mix that in there. And if you're doing this on your stove top, same thing, just mix it in really well and then uh, continue to saute for another couple minutes and then it'll be ready. Okay, so we've waited a couple of minutes. We're gonna go ahead and get out our chow mein. Um, if you take a look, it has that nice kind of golden brown uh, texture and look to it. All right, and I'm just gonna use some tongs to get it out. You know, if you're using the Ninja Grill, if it's at home, you can just serve it, you know, out of the pan. And this makes quite a bit. I mean, honestly, you could, I mean, probably feed mm, four people that maybe one of them has had surgery. You could probably feed at least uh, four, four to six people, you know, if everyone's had surgery, you'd have quite a bit. And especially if you add in that protein on the side. Okay, so this is the final product. I'm gonna put it in a bowl and just kind of taste test it, make sure it's good, and then we'll see. All right, here goes for the taste test. Gonna get a good mixed bite, get some of the spaghetti squash noodles, get some of that cabbage in there. Tastes 
like chow mein. <laughs> it's got a little extra crisp because of the spaghetti squash noodles, um, which is great. I like the crisp. It kind of mimics that stuff that you put on top. Um, so again, add your salmon to the top of this, add some chicken. It's really delicious. I hope you like it.